All right, guys, this is my first time shooting this style of video. I'm going to be doing some quick breakdowns of sequences from some individual matches from Noki Worlds or ADCC or any of the major events that are happening right now. In this particular match, I'm going to be breaking down Dante Leone versus DeAndre Corbe. Dante's a good friend of mine. He won his second Black Belt World title this past weekend at Nogi Worlds. This time at lightweight. Uh, last time was at middleweight. So I'm super happy for him. And this is his semifinals match against a very game DeAndre Corbe, who actually won Nogi Pans at Black Belt this year at lightweight. So just a couple of months ago. So this was kind of the pivotal sequence in the match, and this resulted in Dante eventually getting the submission. So I'm just going to play out the sequence first. And then we'll go back and I'm going to explain exactly what's going on. So it's only about 15, 20 seconds, but I think there's a lot going on in this short period of time. And I think you guys are going to get a lot out of listening to this and helping you understand what's going on in these sequences. So we have Dante in X-Guard. He's going to backstep and he gets into a passing sequence here. And he forces DeAndre to turtle and ends up taking the back just like that. So again, very quick sequence, not a long time at all, but there's a lot going on in that short period of time. And understanding what's going on in these, you know, in these pivotal moments is gonna help you guys in your training or competing to, you know, know what you should be focusing on in these positions. So we're starting off, DeAndre has Dante and X guard. So he has an underhook on the leg with his right hand and he has kind of traditional X guard hooks over here. So generally an X guard, the offensive guy wants to be keeping his partner's weight on their back leg. And Dante, the defensive guy, wants to be keeping the weight on the front leg right here. So this is kind of a lot of where the battle is. If Dante can get weight on his front leg, his left leg, which he ends up doing, he can start to step out and back step. So you kind of see this fight happening right here. So, and Dante is able to put his left leg very heavy. And this is very important. Um, this is gonna allow him to step out because he needs to make this leg light in order to backstep. So Dante's trying to backstep, he doesn't successfully quite get it, and then he switches to this C grip on the ankle. So you can't really see in the frame, but he has his thumb is right here, and his forefingers are on the other side of the leg, and his left knee is heavy on DeAndre's chest. This is gonna allow him to stuff that X guard hook and backstep. So when you guys are uh, stepping out of X guard, if you see, we obviously have two hooks right here. Generally, we're always focusing on stepping out of the bottom hook. The top hook, so Dante wants to be stepping towards the camera. This top hook is not doing anything to stop that from happening. It's really the bottom hook that is doing most of that work or, or all of that work. So when Dante stuffs and clears this hook, this top hook effectively is not controlling him anymore. So you see how he stuffs that leg. He puts the knee on the chest to make his right leg light. That means he can actually step it out. And he steps out just like this. So now, once he stepped out, DeAndre still has this underhook on the leg right here. Because he was in X guard, he, he did have that underhook. But for this moment that Dante has stepped out of X guard, this underhook for DeAndre becomes a little bit of a liability. Because this arm should be coming out to frame. Because he wants to recover his knees. You see how Dante is kind of almost perpendicular with DeAndre here. So DeAndre really needs that, I'm sorry, that right hand to come out and start to frame. So... Dante's going to take advantage of this, and he's going to step past the hip line, not quite to knee on belly, but to a, a compromising position for DeAndre. So you see, he controls this ankle, and he steps around the hip line, just like this. So now, DeAndre is in a very compromised position. His knee line has been cleared, and, and you know he's potentially going to give up a pass here. So look at the way Dante is grabbing this ankle. This is uh, very, very important. So if you see... He has that same C grip we talked about with the four fingers on one side and the thumb on the other side. And then he's using his own leg to pin DeAndre's leg. So on one side, DeAndre's leg is trapped by Dante's leg. On the other side, DeAndre's leg is trapped by Dante's grip. So DeAndre effectively cannot bring this left leg in to recover guard. That's normally how you would recover guard here, is he would pummel this leg in front of Dante's chest or shoulders or hips and use it to bring his bottom leg back in. That's that's most of the time how you recover. But because of this way, the way that Dante's grabbing, DeAndre can't do that. He really only has this frame, and he's going to grab the ankle with this hand. He could also frame with that hand, but that's not going to be enough to stop Deon, uh, to stop Dante from dropping his weight. So DeAndre is going to have to invert 
over his shoulder right here. So Timmy's gonna put his toes on the mat. He's already in the process of doing this. And he's gonna roll over his shoulder like this. And this is the proper way to recover guard here. But Dante, having I'm sure drilled the sequence a million times, is immediately ready to transition to a stack. So you see, as, De as DeAndre rolls over his shoulder, Dante goes to pin this leg down and this left hand is already reaching for DeAndre's bottom hip and he starts to settle into a stack pass position. So ideally what he wants to do, he wants to keep DeAndre on his shoulders, pin this left leg above the head, and then his uh, left hand is snaking in right here and he wants to come around and pass this way, which he eventually does. But DeAndre, you know, having good guard retention, starts to stop this a little bit. So he starts to turn his hips into him and high leg over and start to frame on him. So he's controlling that stack pass arm on this side. Then on this side, he's pummeling that left leg in to try to face Dante right here. So Dante does something very intelligent here. If he had just stayed where he is, DeAndre would have recovered the guard. But Dante moves to a perpendicular angle. See how he comes around? He steps his left leg past the shoulder line. Now his hips are perpendicular with DeAndre's hips. This is really important when passing the guard. Getting to this perpendicular angle when you're able to is really going to put you guys in a good position to pass the guard. And that's just what Dante does right here. So from this perpendicular angle, he's going to get his head below the hip right here. So he's perpendicular and he has to uh, make a, a level change from his chest and shoulders being up here to getting down here by Dante's chest. So what he does is he uses this right arm scoop on, Don, on DeAndre's leg and he drops himself down. So we kind of, they kind of go into a little bit of a like scramble-ish retention period here where DeAndre starts to bring that leg in. But Dante transitions his right hand to an underhook on that leg just like this. Once he gets this, he can effectively lower his head down, and now he puts DeAndre in a compromised position. Let me move it back one frame, just like this, right here. So he gets that head nice and low. DeAndre's trying to high leg over, but because Dante's shoulders and head are so low, he's not gonna be able to get this outside leg over to recover his guard. So he really has no choice here but to start to push on the shoulder. So he starts to push, and you see what Dante does in this initial position with your head in this spot right here. You're not in a great position to pass the guard with your head on that, uh, with your head in that position and your arms where they were. So let me just get back here. So, so right here. So you see Dante's head is buried, but both arms are on the same side of the body. So generally, when passing the guard, you need one arm on each side. So. DeAndre's hips are free on this left side. So what Dante does, he's going to throw this left arm over and he's going to run around the head. This is very important. So the left arm comes over, over the body. Now he's going to take a big step over DeAndre's head right here. Because with these grips where he has one arm over the body this way and one arm checking the hip, you generally can't stay perpendicular. You have to run north-south when you do this. So as he runs north-south, his left knee is going to come on the other side of DeAndre's head. Just like this. So, in this particular tournament, this is an IBJJF tournament, so there's points involved. If DeAndre stayed on his back right here, he would be giving up a guard pass, which in the semifinals of the Black Belt World Championships, six minutes left on the clock, you're probably losing, especially against someone like Dante. So, DeAndre has to turtle here. So, Dante knows that. So, he's using his head in front of the hips to slow DeAndre down. And as DeAndre turtles, his left arm comes over, just like that. So, and now he's in a good position to take the back. So let's just look at that again. He gets that kind of underhook, buries his head, starts to circle. The left arm is coming over the body. He steps over the head, and DeAndre's going to turtle. So if he leaves his arms here and DeAndre turtled, he would just end up in like a front head lock or a chest lock, which is not necessarily what he wants. That would give DeAndre an opportunity to back out and reset himself. And that would only be an advantage. So as DeAndre turtles, his head is in front of the belly that's slowing him down. And then Dante's left arm is gonna come over and his right hand is gonna come in front of the face, just like this, boom. So now he's in position to get a seatbelt. Left side is around uh, DeAndre's hip and he's gonna start to take the back. So just like this. So when this happens right here, so he just got that left side underhook and now he's starting to come around. If you see, Dante's hips are perpendicular with DeAndre. So generally when taking the back, you want your hips directly behind your partner's hips. 
So DeAndre knows this, so he's going to go to put his shoulders on the mat. He's going to put his left shoulder on the mat to try to roll Dante through and force some type of scramble to get out. So Dante's going to replace his right knee where his left knee is, and his left knee is going to come around the back and catch DeAndre's far hip. So this back-taking movement is extremely common. If you watch any high-level black belt competitor or any high-level competitor in general, they are all do this type of movement when taking the back. There's some variation of what Dante is about to do right now. So if you see, he switches the legs, and then that left knee is going to come all the way around, and he rolls all the way through. So let's just watch that again real quick. So from this uh, position, he throws that left arm over, right arm comes in front, now he's going to switch his legs and he throws that leg around the corner because he knows DeAndre is going to be turtling right here. Boom. Just like that. So now his first hook is in. He has a seatbelt. His head is in proper position. And when I say that, I mean his head is on the side of the underhook. So his left, left arm is the underhook. Dante's fighting to get his head on that left side. You generally don't want your head on the side of your choking arm. You want it on the side of your underhook arm. So as he rolls all the way through... He's going to bring him to the other side. He puts that left hook in. And this is just for the purpose of stretching DeAndre out so Dante can get his second hook in. The space is there. And you see he pummels that in in just a second. Just like this. Boom. Just like that. So another thing Dante does to get that hook in. So you can't really see it that well in the video just because of the angle. But if you see Dante's right hand, you can see his fingers and his hand comes up around DeAndre's neck. So DeAndre's are kind of in a situation now where one hook is in, points have not been awarded yet, but DeAndre is trying to prevent this left leg from coming inside. So Dante throws his right hand around DeAndre's neck up to his shoulder line right here. So you see Dante's right hand. That's going to force DeAndre's left hand to come up, or really both hands to come up to defend. That's going to open the space up for Dante's hook to come in. So you see how that space widened a little bit because DeAndre was protecting his neck. And now, boom, that second hook comes in. Dante takes the back. So that's the sequence right there. About 15 seconds long, but there's a lot of little details going on. And just to make that sequence happen, you know, Dante had to put in you know thousands of hours of work to make that look as seamless as it just did right there. So that's it for this video guys uh, please let me know if you guys like this this is my first time doing this so you know my editing skills are non-existent you know hopefully you guys can understand what i'm talking about uh, just by using my mouse cursor in the future i definitely will upgrade to a different type of software but i just wanted to get this out there uh again this is just one clip i'm doing i'm definitely open to doing an entire match breakdown i, I did film one but it was just so long it was like over an hour long it was just way too much to just post as one video but if you guys like this please let me know uh i do have a bunch of reels on my instagram breaking down you know either matches or just breaking down some techniques so that's kind of more short form content uh, i do have uh bjj fanatics instructionals if you guys like my style of teaching i have one on reverse telehiva 50 50 and i just filmed one on outside ashi last weekend and i do have a patreon so that is a paid service but if you guys do enjoy my teaching i post a video or a pretty detailed technique video on there every week and i have probably over 100 videos up there right now so if you guys like this please let me know in the comments i appreciate you guys watching and i'll see you all soon thanks